the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, with his trainer, Andre Rozier, wearing blue with red and white. Officially weighing in at 153 pounds. His professional record is an excellent one, consisting of 25 victories, 14 wins by knockout, and only one defeat. Here is the challenger from Brooklyn, New York, the WBA international champion, Saddam. World Kid Ali! And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Freddie Roach, wearing pink and officially weighing in at 151.6 pounds. His professional record, 45 victories, including 33 wins by knockout, Against five defeats, he's a six-time four-division world champion. Tonight, win or lose, he says farewell to a glorious Hall of Fame career. Here is the former super lightweight world champion, the former two-time welterweight world champion, the former middleweight world champion, and the reigning defending two-time light middleweight champion of the world, Thomas y Caballeros de Aguas, Puerto Rico, que presenta el legendario Boricua, el gran campeón puertorriqueño, Miguel Angel Cor Boxer Chief Second. Boxer Chief Second. Okay. Good evening, sit down. Good evening, Miguel. Gentlemen, you both know the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Touch goes now. Come on, fighting at the bell. A lot of people have shown up here at Madison Square Garden to watch Miguel Cotto fight a guy who most don't give a great chance to win. In other words, they've shown up to say thanks for the memories. And Miguel Cotto, I think right now, wants to give them a thanks for the memories performance. Give them one more memory before he goes. An emotional crowd on an emotional night. The 47th prize fight of Miguel Cotto's career. Saddam shows up looking muscular, looking as though he has added the extra weight well. Since he did a lot of push-ups to get his strength up a little bit so he can be ready to deal with the extra weight. Good right hand. Saddam Ali is a talented guy. He's fast, he has ability. Look over, Saddam, look over. But he's considered since the Vargas fight a little chinny since he was stopped by a guy who's not a big puncher, and Miguel can punch. And he's going to have to cope with Miguel's experience and skill. Interesting. If you were looking for someone whose footwork is similar to Ali's, he's fighting him. That they are almost identical to each other in the way they move their feet. Looking for punching room here in round one. No, Jim, I think that's a little bit different. I think um, Miguel brings his feet together a little bit more than does Saddam Ali. Saddam Ali has a little bit more disciplined footwork as far as from his amateur days, I think. Your eyes much better than mine for that technicality for sure. Good body shot with the right hand by Saddam Ali. We yeah. haven't seen Cotto land a left hook quite yet. He attacked Cotto while Cotto's feet were together. 
which is the time to attack him if he's gonna attack. Just can't get brave and run into that left hook. Crowd is chanting Kodo, Kodo, Kodo. They want to see the left hook to the body. Kodo's a little bothered by Ali's speed. Uh, Saddam has fast hands and a little pop in that right hand. And Kodo is gonna have to rely on his timing as he's done already in this round behind some jabs that he's countered with effectively based on, on his superior timing like that. Kodo landed a solid step in right hand, missed with the left. Over the top. Ali giving a very good account of himself here in round number one. Total punch is thrown, as you can see. Ali has the edge. The thing that Ali can't do, though, Jim, he can't gamble and trade with Cotto, whereas Cotto can take a gamble and trade with him. Cotto almost had him cornered in position to fire a body Ten shot. To the bell. Wound up settling for a couple of little taps with the left. Saddam goes back to the center of the ring, tries to land something that will give Cotto a memory at the end of round one. A good round one. High level stuff. Good job. Now the jabs work really well. Okay, and then you get that right hook to the body going really well also, right? Okay. Behind the jab, okay? Yeah. Now, at some point though, we're gonna change direction with that we're going over the head with that shot. Okay. Okay, but let's go with the body a couple more times. The feet are not quite as disciplined in night jam, but that jab right there is the same jab that neutralized Shane Mosley's speed on the night that Cotto beat Shane Mosley. So if that jab can show up a little bit more often, it would be a very good weapon for Cotto to use again tonight. Seated at ringside, Melissa Cotto to the far right side, and Cotto's children to the right of Melissa. He has four children in all. In all. I see at least three of them here tonight. Power in one, Koto landed seven out of 20 power shots, Ali five out of 22. Neither fighter landed a jab in round one. Koto landed that one we saw, though. He landed a couple of jabs. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm incorrect. I'm looking at the wrong graphic. It was my fault. That was an error. But it's understandable to not remember them always as jabs, because his jabs land like power punches. Koto is naturally left-handed, so his jab and his hook are his big, powerful punches. Professional career almost didn't get underway as the result of an automobile accident the year after the Olympics in which he broke his left arm. See what I said about depth of skill earlier? Yep. Cotto is able... Oh, oh, right hand hurts Cotto. Oh, Cotto right hurts bad. Hand hurts. Second right hand hurt him worse than the first. Well, Saddam has to be careful Saddam right with here. a big opportunity here. Cotto still groggy. Hurt bad, Jim. Definitely. Didn't know where his feet were. Looking stiff legged at the moment. This I think he's actually trying to play possum a little bit, trying to convince Saddam that he's better off than he really is. Yep, and this is the, the time when Saddam has to be careful not to trade with him, though. That, see that? And see? Down goes Saddam it's on a, a right now. Garlic Pitch is going to rule the slip. Garlic Pitch is going to say Cotto's foot was on Saddam's foot before he went down. Saddam thought he was down. S Saddam may have been hit by something. He was ready to take like, account. Yep. He was ready to take account, no question. The punch hit his own glove, and he thought it hit him. Saddam's right hand, his speed and power with the right hand caught Cotto by surprise, hurt him bad. And But Cotto's timing and technique has turned the tables a bit here. And his acting ability. I think Saddam didn't realize how badly hurt Cotto was. He didn't. <laughs> Another good right hand. And now Cotto's got his faculties back and is firing with passion. Really interesting in exchanges. As you mentioned, guys, Cotto's muscle memory gives him the advantage, but Saddam has real speed and punching power in those exchanges. Maybe there's a power edge to Cotto. Certainly there's a speed edge early on for Saddam Ali. Uppercut lands for Saddam Ali. Dramatic round 
two comes to a close. As amid all the glorious celebration here in Madison Square Garden, it almost came apart all at once for Miguel Cotto. Showed up for an event, and we're getting a fight. All right. Well, let's start paying our way in a little bit more, okay? And then, sir, don't walk in there with your hands down, okay? okay. We're walking that one shot, okay? Okay, no problem. All right, now you, the, the right hand was good. Body and head were both head. good. Both he used to a straight well. right hand by Saddam Ali. And Jim, this is what I mean when he catch Cotto with while Cotto was bouncing straight up and down. That caught Cotto while Cotto's feet wasn't ready, and it hurt Cotto worse than we thought it did. Well, it hurt him worse than even he thought it did. There's another right hand. See his leg jumps up, jump up right there. Those three right hands are the ones that hurt him. Here you see the slip by Saddam. He threw the hook, and the momentum of the hook took him down. No punch at all. That was the action in round two, and now we go to round three. Harold Letterman giving one round to each of the two fighters. A lot of judges might have given the first to Saddam Ali, even though he did not land as many punches as might have appeared to be the case. And Jim, that hurt, that, that punch that he hurt Cotto with could also come back to hurt him because if he feels like he's a better puncher than Cotto and tries to trade and gives Cotto a good left hook, that could end the night for Saddam, so he has to be really careful not to take that punch, that one punch, for granted. It's up to his trainer, Andre Rozier, to remind him of reality with regard to that. Roy, is Miguel's, the fact that Miguel hasn't landed a lot of hooks to the body about his mentality or about something Saddam's doing to take it away from him? Saddam is doing something to take it away from him. First thing he did was he sparred with Curtis Stevens, who also has a beautiful left hook to make sure he got ready to see that weapon coming at him. Now every time Cotto comes, he goes low and he keeps his right hand, see it, glued right to the side of his face. That makes it very difficult for Cotto to land the hook. Not saying that Cotto won't or can't, but that does make it very difficult. I think, I think also Saddam Ali's right hand has Cotto a little hesitant to dip and throw the hook to the body. Yes, it does. The strategy that trainer Andre Rozier quoted to me yesterday was keep the right earmuff up, keep the right glove pinned to his ear, and block the left hook all through the fight that way. He might give that. it up to the body that way. He has to do that, don't Jim. Give Saddam Ali credit, his speed is making Cotto look 37. He's a good 37, but 37 nonetheless. Can't find the chance to pin Ali against the ropes and land punches in combination. That was a good straight right by Cotto. One shot at a time for Miguel Cotto. The only one with the hand speed to land the combination so far is Saddam Ali. Now Cotto lands an uppercut with the right hand, drives Saddam back. Saddam Ali said that the, what he learned against Jesse Vargas was he has to give himself the best chance to win in terms of his preparation. And that he did that for Cotto tonight. And so far from his performance, it appears he has. And what he's doing right now, Max, he's doing like Andre did in the second Kovalev fight. He's landing punches that are letting, letting Cotto know that I can knock you out too. Tonight after Christmas, tune in for HBO's Boxing's Best of 2017. Four consecutive nights of the biggest fights and the biggest stars and their most significant bouts of the year. Up first, a replay of the disputed draw between Canelo Alvarez and Triple G. Watch it again and judge for yourself. And speaking of judging, here's Danny Jacobs. He went the distance with Gennady Golovkin earlier this year here in Madison Square Garden, March 18, in fact and lost a close decision, unanimous decision, difference in the fight, a knockdown of Daniel Jacobs. But he gave Golovkin all he could ask for and then scored another win later in the year. There's Saddam Ali's father, 
Communicating with him from ringside. He's the one who first took Saddam Ali to a boxing gym a few days after he watched Prince Nassim Hamed against Kevin Kelly December 20 years ago here in Madison Square Garden. And Harold Letterman, you were ringside for that one. How do you have this one so far? Okay, Jim, I got a two rounds to one. 29, 28, Miguel Cotto. I gave Miguel Cotto rounds one and three, gave Saddam Ali the second round. I got to tell you something, though, Jim. You know, it's funny about that knockdown. I, I saw that knockdown. I swear to God it looked as though Saddam Ali really got knocked down in the second round. But be as it may, Charlie Fitch called it a slip. And, you know, his call is what counts. But, he, oh, oh, Cotto's hurt again. Oh, Cotto got hurt again. You know, I wonder how much of that is the signage in the middle of being wet and slippery. Because, in fact, we know Saddam Ali slipped from the replay. And Cotto's foot just then did a dance, but maybe it slipped on the sign. No, he don't slip and do a dance upward. If you do a slip, it slips like Saddam slipped when he punched and the momentum took it to the side. When your foot jumps up and off the canvas, that's not a slip. That's a bad oh. leg. Oh, he got hit with something, yeah, too. Yeah, that's not a slip at all. But his legs look kind of sturdy now all of a sudden, Roy. Well, because they're flash shots. Now Cotto suddenly is much more accurate, and he lands a left hook to the body. Landed his money punch. Comes forward with more aggression now. And suddenly, Cotto looks a little bit less than 37 as some of the timing returns. Some of the confidence follows the landing of the left hook which is always the measure of how well he's fighting. Well, the, Saddam Ali's going to have to stay under control, not get careless in an exchange. The bad news for Cotto is he now knows Saddam can hurt him with the right hand and the left hand. That's exactly right. And I think Saddam is mainly concerned with Cotto's left hand. Saddam putting punches together in combination again. Landed a left hook that bothered Cotto. Second time in the round that Cotto has been momentarily wobbled by a Saddam connect. And now Saddam is backing Cotto up. Not a good sign for Cotto. He, he looks like he's shaking Cotto up on more than one occasion so far tonight. And particularly in this round, his fluidity and his hand speed are better than those of Miguel. Power punches landed in the round, second round in a row. As you can see, Saddam Ali landing more than Miguel Cotto. Good right hand got in for Miguel when Saddam was preoccupied with that good hard Miguel Cotto left jab. Now Cotto had one big flurry in the round. He's looking for another one with which to close it out. Good jab, Good fight. Listen to me, nephew. Look at me. Yeah, I got it. You're making it harder than it got to be. Really, you are. You should jab and walk and be smart. And don't pull up in the air. Get low. Don't pull up in the air. Double leg jab, start hitting him in the air. You hurt him again, and you're not looking at what you're doing. Exactly. You got it. When you hurt him, tighten that deep. That's right. Just walk him and come up the middle with the uppercut. Max, he see again this. Punch by Saddam was high on the head right there, but watch Cotto's legs do a dance. They're not slipping. See that? That's They're jumping right. up in the air. You're right. That's a hurt sign. That's not slippage. Then Cotto comes back and he puts the pressure on, start with the body shots, followed by the left hook to the body, and misses with a good left hook up top. That's what he needs to do more of. Right, he was shit. He was hurt by that punch. Yes, and guys, was. it was the double bad news. It was a left hand high on the head. Not like a right hand on the chin. If you accept CompuBox as a viable measure of what's going on in the fight, it's close. Cotto has landed 48 of 185. Saddam has landed 41 of 198. So Cotto had landing slightly the higher percentage. Saddam slightly more active. You've seen the hand speed problems that Saddam Ali can create for Miguel Cotto. And we all have a sense of the possible power deficit at which Saddam might find himself if Cotto is able to begin landing regularly to the body, which is where he's most effective. Good left hand for Cotto. Good right hand by Saddam. The danger, I think, for Saddam 
is in those exchanges because Cotto, as I said, is, Saddam was a good amateur. Cotto was really a tremendous one. Very experienced as a pro and in, in exchanges, when the both fighters are punching, even though Cotto's not as quick, he can be more accurate. Cotto lost at the Sydney Olympics to Muhammad Abdullah. That was another loss that he avenged as a professional, just as was the case with Gelson Pinto. Hard to believe it's already 17 years ago. Here, Saddam Ali's corner, they don't want him standing up, because when you stand up straight, your chin is exposed. They want him low. Might also be easier for go to land body shots if Saddam is standing up. What makes this type of fight fun, Jim, is that one guy we already know can hurt the other guy, and the other guy can knock out the one guy that can do the hurt. So it's a very typical boxing situation, but a very good fight. It creates the tension that makes for an exciting fight. The, 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 the styles and roles are clearly defined. The young, fast guy, who I think is up ahead in this fight against the old, powerful guy who's coming forward trying to land something big. Another nice series of combinations for Ali. Koto lands a left right on the belt line. Good left by the shot by Koto. Kind of punch that can slow Saddam down over the course of the fight. Left took to the body, lands again for Koto. And Saddam reaches to tie Koto up after that landed shot. That could have decided a close round. December 9, Boxing After Dark returns with a triple header headlined by Orlando Salido's matchup with fellow all action fighter Mickey Roman later that same night. More boxing on HBO Latino, headlined by Dennis Shapikov versus Rene Alvarado. One week later, December 16, Billy Joe Saunders puts his middleweight belt and undefeated record on the line against knockout artist David Lemieux. Don't wait for him. You're waiting for him. Let's get that jab popping. Control the action. You gotta work. You don't want Anytime you have 30 seconds, you're still around. You let your hands go. Don't wait. Don't let him. All right, let's go. Let's go. Bring them All right. So you heard the urgency from Andre Rozier and in the corner of Saddam Ali. As we go to round six of a scheduled 12. Total power punches landed in the fight. You see the numbers. Close. Ali with a slight edge. Now Saddam Ali's job is to show he's not a front runner. I think he's probably winning the fight right now. But as we approach the second half of the fight, he has a really experienced guy with a big left hook. He's got to show that he has the concentration and the stuff of a thoroughbred. Boy, these are the real rounds that you have to be able to man. If you can't man these late rounds, the last half of the fight, right. you may never get to be the man. Or even the middle rounds, when, when the veteran starts to come on, can you keep the fight contained? And not let him come on and, and as confidently and freely as he would like to. They're trading punches again, traded punches in the corner a moment ago, but Cotto is beginning to make his left hook a factor in the fight. He's landed a couple more of them here in this round after having closed out the last round with a landed left hook to the body. Other thing Saddam doing, Jim, is he's avoiding that jab with some really good hip movement. And by avoiding that jab, it's not allowing Cotto to slow him down or find him easy. Like right there, Cotto can't touch him with the jab first. When he does touch him like he did right there, he can land the body shots. But when he can't land the jab first to see where he is, it makes it hard for Cotto. Let's listen to Andre Rozier as he shouts instructions to Saddam Ali. Look over, look over, Saddam. Up the middle, Saddam. Crowd oohs and ahs on a reach punch for Cotto. It landed, but not with a lot of power. Don't wait, Saddam. Don't wait, Saddam. Oh. So Cotto has shown 
much more respect for Saddam's right hand, and he's starting to take that away from Saddam. And he's finding more success coming in now as he's throwing the hook downstairs. Roy, the big mantra in Saddam's corner now is don't wait. Oh, oh right hand. And waiting is just what got him caught with that right hand, Jim. He was waiting just as you said it and got caught. And as we said, we know Jesse Vargas wasn't known as a big right hand puncher, but if he can hurt him with the right hand, it's pretty sure that Cotto also could hurt him with the right hand. And Cotto is not known as a big right hand puncher either. Cotto got it on the left hook. Another left hook to the body. And now Saddam is grinning at him. Pretty sure sign most of the time that you've done some damage. Good left hand by Saddam Ali. Very good left hand, which may stop the rally by Miguel Cotto. Left hook to the body again by Cotto. Good round. Keep your defense power mount. Change your height up and down. This is what they look for, Jim. You can't find a better straight landed right hand than this. Boom, textbook right on the chin by a guy who's known for a left hook, not a straight right hand. He plants a straight right hand directly down the pipe. Because, as you pointed out, Saddam was standing, doing nothing, waiting. Waiting as what we call taking pictures. <laughs> and here's the family reaction on the Kodo side of the ring. <laughs> Melissa's been through so many of these, and she's still nervous every time. Total punches in round six. Kodo was 20 out of 52. Ali, 12 out of 40. Now we're into the seventh round. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim, I got it four rounds to two. 58, 56, Miguel Cotto. You know, Jim, I just think he's landing the hardest shots. I gave him rounds one, three, five, and six. Certainly in round six, he staggered the uh, Saddam Ali. But I, I just think that he's landing harder. First of all, he's aggressive. You gotta give him credit for that. And second of all, I think he's landing the hardest shots. Four to two, Miguel Cotto. Equal time, Max Kellerman. I know you may disagree with that scorecard. You believe it's now an even fight? Yeah, I think it's even. I agree with Harold that in the sixth round, Cotto landed the harder shots. I think up until the sixth round, Saddam Ali was landing the harder shots. Only bad thing for Saddam Ali right now is that the last round, Cotto began to make contact the way he wants to make contact. That's right. And That's what you don't want to see. I think the momentum in the fight shifted a couple of rounds ago when Cotto finally started to find the target with his left hook to the body. And Saddam Ali told us in the fighter meetings yesterday that he has to watch for Cotto's right hand, too. You know, he, he can't just think about the left hook. Well, we saw that in the last round. But that's I think sure. that that's a trade you'd have to make. You really got to watch the hook from Cotto. And if you got to eat some right hands instead, you, it's a better idea because that Cotto hook is a fight finisher. It's a smart option. The right hand is not usually going to finish the fight. It could get you down. It could hurt you. But like you said, it's not going to close the doors. The left hook will close the doors. Maybe not even for just tonight. <laughs> he may close the door for the rest of your career. So, Cotto does have Go ahead. left career ending power in that left hand. See Saddam Ali's right eye starting to swell. This is a knowledgeable boxing crowd. You hear them roar immediately when they see Miguel throw a left hook. They know what to look for. Now, this is the time where the veteran champion convinces the front runner that you can't win this fight. And Saddam Ali's gonna have to find something here to fight that off, not only in Miguel's mind, but I think in his own mind right now. Yes, you gotta stand your ground right now. If you don't stand your ground right now, you're done. Crowd goes, ooh, on the left hook to the body. Saddam comes back with a big right hand. Cotto not bothered, lands his jab. I think that was the best left hook to the body he's landed all night, Jim. He's got Saddam 
in pretty constant retreat now. It's very difficult to beat a fighter like Miguel Cotto going backward. You're making him look good when you retreat. Control him with the jab, it makes everything easy, okay? All right, you know which way he's gonna go, which way he's gonna break off. He does the same thing every time, okay? All right? You go with that jab, you go break That's wrong with the fight. All right, oh, break, break in, the body shots, okay? All right? Up and down, no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Keep that jab, okay? Wherever he goes. Jab, 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 jab. jab. He's okay. seen. Cotto come in with a one-two, just decoy to set up that beautiful left hook to the body. And that, I think, was the best left hook to the body we've seen all night from Miguel Cotto. And you saw the right elbow go down, which indicates that the punch no, has landed no, where you no. wanted to land. That's what I meant by depth of skill. If something, one thing's not working for Cotto, he can make an adjustment, do something else. Saddam Ali has to show that he can do the same, that it's not just youth and fast twitch reflexes that gave him his advantage early, that he has enough depth to hang with Kodo in these rounds. Sitting directly behind us, Saddam Ali's father stood up at the end of the last round, got his son's attention and said, you've got to throw more punches. You're not using your hands enough, throw more. Of course, the trouble with throwing more is you open yourself up to this. Boy, Saddam's and fighting with hand. hard. Fighting hard, Saddam lands the left hand and now lands the right. Better not get overconfident, though, Jim. If he runs into one of these left hooks, that was a good left hook to the body right there. It was a right hand shot by Saddam. Ali with a sudden burst of energy. Let's see what Koto can do about it. You don't have the same kind of sophisticated technique as the younger fighter. You got to do what Ali just did which is just use your athletic ability to drive the other guy back. Make a statement with your hand speed. Left hook to the body by Cotto again. Truly focusing now these last few rounds on landing his money punch. Really a terrific fight so far. By both fighters. Absolutely. Cotto looked a little outgunned in the early going and has responded to that with wisdom and skill. And now you see him landing that jab a little bit more frequently. Kodo, that is. And, and Saddam Ali is doing his best not just to accept what many in this arena tonight would like to be his fate. Good left uppercut. That hurt Kodo. Good left uppercut by Ali. That hurt Kodo bad. But once again, Saddam stays back, seemingly not aware that Cotto was momentarily in trouble. Yes, he did not realize how bad that left, left uppercut hurt Cotto just did. Second time in the fight that he has failed to capitalize on what appeared to be a real opportunity. Maybe the third, Jim. Because he hurt him with the left hand, too, earlier in the fight. And that has something to do with Miguel Cotto's mystique. Little left hook lands for Miguel. See the difference in body shots landed to this moment in the fight. And if Cotto, in fact, is winning the fight, I think the body shots are the reason, along with the jab. And he just landed a right hand there that momentarily knocked Saddam back. Saddam Ali needed to come up with something this round to stem the tide, and he did. Yep. And left uppercut. And the willingness to go out and use it to impose himself. Take a deep breath. Suck it up. Reset yourself. Let's just talk. What's the matter? Do you want to win this fight? You want to win this fight? Okay, good. Keep your hands up and use your jab. It's not that deep. He's getting tired, Saddam. You heard him and you always pull back. Bone up your attack. You can't think one point, two point, but you heard him tell you. Oh, wait, Curtis, wait, wait, wait. Listen, listen. Here you see Cotto land that beautiful left hook to the body. This is, to me, probably the even better one.
better than the first one we saw because it was a little higher. That was a beautiful, you saw that elbow come down like Absolutely. we're talking about, Jim. But then you see Saddam with a beautiful left uppercut on the inside himself, and that punch hurt Cotto really, really bad. You see him even stop the left hook right there. Saddam, Saddam! Okay. Determined expression on the face of Miguel Cotto. 47th fight of his career. <coughs> he says it's the last. Crowd in Madison Square Garden trying to pull him through every crisis in a crisis-filled fight where he's been hurt three or four times by Saddam Ali and where he's had Saddam hurt three or four times. Saddam Ali's father is here right behind us ringside. And, you know, in the corner, Saddam can get any instructions, you know, whatever. But his father yelled at him before the last round, you have to throw more punches. Saddam nodded and went out and threw more punches. I don't think it's necessarily more punches, Max. I think it's more about the time and throwing the punches and what punches, the quality of punches that he throws. But the mentality, yeah. if Dag was telling him attack. Right. I wonder if Miguel Cotto was looking for a little breather in the first minute of this round. I don't know. The action slowed down. And Ali has allowed the action to slow down. And Cotto's taking his time. Not coming forward with urgency at this moment. Letting some time drift off the clock, so to speak. Good movement by Saddam Ali. When Saddam Ali was a kid, and he used to dominate the Golden Gloves in New York, and uh, he was always, you know, faster than the other guy, snappier puncher than the other guy. Looking a lot like he's looked in some rounds tonight. Think about that, though, Max. The other guy wasn't Miguel Cotto, who has a left hook that could end things in one instance. Not much has happened here in the ninth round so far. Round is on the table as we come to the last minute. Cotto has done a good job of ducking and slipping in this round. But he hasn't really come forward much looking to land. Now and Miguel begins to apply a little bit pressure as the round continues. Saddam throwing combinations. Miguel mostly blocking those shots. Mostly blocking again with his gloves. This has been... This has been a round of defensive skill for Miguel Cotto as he's used his feet and his hands to slow the action down and prevent, prevent Saddam from getting anything big done. These are three phony minutes in the middle of an action fight. And I think that's exactly what Cotto wanted. And he steps in and lands one left hook and Saddam lands a right hand and that's the end of the round. Mark your calendars on December 13 and 27 for this year's final installments of the fight game. Join me, along with Max Kellum and Bernard Hopkins, as we look at boxing's biggest stories and issues and give out our year-end awards. One edition on the 13th, year-end edition on the 27th. Behind the jab, drop that right hand body. Okay. All right. Let's try to look. He's not, he's not looking at the, for the left hook of the body. Okay. All right. Go over and bang. Behind there. Really, 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 in the ninth round, as you're looking at outside shot in Manhattan, the beautiful Empire State Building, Cotto threw and landed fight lows of eight punches landed and 35 punches thrown. Ali had an opportunity and threw 64 punches, but he only landed 10 as Cotto defended brilliantly through the entire round. Now we come to the 10th. And Harold, how do you have it three quarters of the way through? Uh, okay, Jim, I gotta give you the Letterman, the, the Letterman theory about what happened in rounds uh, eight and nine. I thought Saddam Ali won rounds eight and, and, and also round nine. I mean, I just don't think Ingo Cotto threw enough punches in those rounds to win those rounds. You know, I had him with a big lead, now I only got him winning five rounds to four. I mean, I got Saddam Ali catching up real quick. I gave Ali rounds one, 
rounds five and rounds eight and nine. So I got a five to four, Miguel Cotto, 86-85, Miguel Cotto. Very, very close, Jim. Max Kellerman, if you agree with Harold about the last two rounds, does that mean that you believe Saddam Ali is now leading in the fight? I think this fight could go either way at this point. Um, I thought that Saddam Ali certainly won the eighth with the uppercut because it hurt Cotto, and in the ninth, Cotto just didn't do anything, so I agree with the score of those two rounds. And I have Ali up right now in the fight because Harold and I disagreed on one round earlier that I gave to Saddam Ali. But, Roy, these are three veteran judges who know the sport very well. Julie Letterman, Eric Karlinski, Steve Weisfeld, and particularly, they're familiar with the glory of Miguel Cotto's career. Could they score a close fight against him they under could, these circumstances? Yeah, yeah, they could score a close fight against him under these circumstances because they realize that as a professional, which is their job too, they have to score it as though this is a normal fight. They can't score it as though this is his last fight. So there's no emeritus factor. Cotto has to go out and win the fight, according to our expert commentator, Roy Jones. I would be surprised if in the close rounds, Cotto didn't get the benefit of the doubt. This is the way it's always been, usually been in boxing, throughout boxing history. And now here comes Saddam Ali trying to rally. Oh, oh big fight. left hook. And he lands a big left hook in the corner. And Cotto is hurt once again. This time Ali tries to go after him. And Cotto's using his feet to stay away. Well, another left hook lands for Saddam Ali. I feel as though Cotto was hurt differently by that hook than he was hurt earlier in the fight. And what do you mean by that? He just looks, you know, he's in, now he turned it around, but he, his coordination looks different since that left hook. He's fatigued, lots has happened. He's taken some big shots. His, his high drama in New York, as Miguel Cotto may be sinking into quicksand in the late rounds against Saddam Ali. Ali has had a big 10th round, hurting Miguel Cotto for maybe the half dozenth time in the fight. And as the bell sounds to end the 10th, it's anybody's fight in Madison Square Garden. Sit down and relax. Listen to me, God damn it. Listen to me. You're two rounds away from being the WBO junior middleweight champion of the world. Do you understand me? Hold up. Stop letting him get away when you hurt him. Do you hear me? Don't let him get away when you hurt him. Go to the body and go to the head from here. Stop opening up the punch. Stop he sees Saddam land a punch that was a very risky shot because of an exchange of left hooks, but boom, he landed. Kodos didn't, and it, that shot definitely hurt Kodo. Now, what he does have to be careful of is that when he gets Kodo hurt, he has to be careful not to run in on it. That was Saddam's father, Mahmoud Ali. You see the roadmap on Miguel Cotto's face of what has been a rough fight coming into the 11th round. Cotto has landed 132 out of 447, and Saddam Ali has landed 132 out of, or 115 out of 526. So Ali has thrown more, Cotto has landed slightly more. Harold Letterman has had an even fight as we come to the last two rounds. Saddam Ali came out looking for a knockout here in the 11th round. And he heard the pep talk from Andre Rozier. Right right rounds away from being the champion of the world. cotto has been in this position many times in his career with a close fight coming to the last two rounds, needing to make a statement to win. And he has a left hook that can make a statement to win, so Saddam has to be really, really careful here. Yep, but so far, the defining Freak. moment in the fight was the eighth round when Saddam Ali took charge again when it looked like Cotto was turning the tide. Se you know, for the several previous rounds, sixth, seventh round, Cotto was really coming on, and Saddam Ali refused to believe that he was going to lose the fight. Cotto's punches it. look slower now. The hand speed advantage for Saddam Ali is readily apparent. Cotto seems fatigued. Seems very weary. He tries to find a foothold here in the 11th round. And Saddam Ali is again the aggressor and again the fresher looking fighter with a minute and a half still to go in the 11th. But Cotto could be playing possum. Who knows? He is a savvy veteran. 
And whether or not he is, what Saddam Ali is doing now entails risk because he's in opening up. He can he's opening him up, opening up for a counter too, and he's willing to take that risk to put an exclamation point on this performance tonight. So it's midnight in New York City. Is it midnight for Miguel Cotto's chance of winning the farewell fight of his career? Charlie Pitt says keep him up. Cotto landed right on the belt line again. His feet begin to move again. And Ali misses with a big right hand. Ali is fighting with the confidence of a guy who believes that he's ahead in the fight and is looking to score a finishing knockout. He's got Cotto in a bad place. I don't know if Cotto has a hurry hand or something, but Cotto is in a bad place. He doesn't look like a fighter who's healthy right now. And watching Miguel Cotto tonight, particularly here in these last few rounds, I'm reminded of the philosophy of many in boxing. And if you can say the word retirement fully and coherently, you're already retired. There was no guarantee that with all the buildup about this being his last fight, that that meant that Cotto was going to come in and fight at his best. He didn't look retired in the sixth, seventh rounds, Jim. It wasn't until Saddam Ali took the play away. But it's a 12-round fight. And right now, he has fallen behind on Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard right, a with a round to go. Stay. All right. Now this is the last round, okay? Let's go with the one-two down the middle, right down the middle, okay? Back him up. All right. Kill. Kill. Don't get careless, okay? Right. Be smart. I know it's gonna go all out, right? Right. Right down the middle. Right down the middle. Good job. 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 All right, let's go. Come on. There's a worried look on the faces of Miguel Cotto's family as they sit at ringside. Melissa Cotto's face tells it all. Mahmoud Ali yelling at his son from ringside. Three minutes to go. 12,391 in attendance tonight. Miguel Cotto in 10 appearances in this building has drawn more than 150,000 people. And many of them may leave disappointed now if Saddam Ali is able to put the pinning touch, finishing touches on what looked like the potential for an upset victory these past few rounds. You heard Freddie Roach asking Miguel Cotto for a big round. Big round, he said. Now, Cotto's trying to deliver it, but the energy is flagging. I don't think, I don't think these people would be disappointed, Jim. He's given them enough, he's given them more than enough. So just because he may come up short in this last one, Gives them no reason to really be disappointed after the career that he's had. How about momentarily disappointed? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, this, like, if Cotto doesn't win this fight, it wouldn't be unlike some of his most memorable losses where he left it all in the ring and gave a great performance in a losing effort. That's why the fans still showed up, even if though he lost to Pacquiao and Mayweather and, and Canelo and Margarito in the first fight, because they were all terrific fights. So you saying we might see a rematch if he loses? No. Nope. <laughs> no, just that you, I'm sure his fans want him to win, but how could you not enjoy the experience of Miguel Cotto, as always, even in the loss? Exactly. I'm not sure a big round is enough. He may need a knockout. Yeah. On the other hand, Christmas is coming in 23 days, and it might arrive early for Miguel Cotto. I don't rule that out. It you, just might. You wonder if each fighter thinks they need a knockout here. Miguel Cotto last scored a 12th round knockout against Ricardo Mayorga in 2011. Saddam Ali's a lot smarter than Ricardo Mayorga. <laughs> former American Olympian against a former Puerto Rican Olympian. Both of them giving their best all the way through. We're in the last minute of the 12th round. It's been an outstanding fight. Give and take, seesaw battle. There were moments when Saddam appeared badly hurt. There were moments when Cotto appeared badly hurt. Came in with a record of 41 and five. Looking for one last big victory with the finishing touches on it. 
crowd rises with 30 seconds to go, trying to cheer the hero on. Jim, earlier I said we showed up for an event and we're getting a fight. We showed up for an event and we got a great fight tonight. CompuBox numbers in the last round. CompuBox saw Cotto landing 19 out of 57 in that round to 13 of 62 for Ali. Sometimes difficult to interpret what's a landed punch and what isn't. But by that standard, CompuBox thought that Cotto had the better numbers in the round. And what kind of a seesaw fight has it been? Let's take a look at some of the highlights all the way through. Round two, Miguel Cotto was hurt in round two by that right hand. You saw the wobble. You saw him lose his balance momentarily. Round four, exactly the same thing, this time with a left hook to the top of the head. And Cotto wobbled again. Round six, Cotto began turned the tide. Wobbled Ali with a straight right hand. Round seven, Miguel Cotto finding his weapon, his classic left hook to the body. Round eight, an even better left hook to the body. But then Ali landed the uppercut in round eight that started his rally in return. And in round 10, Ali with that left hook hurt Cotto one last time and appeared for a moment on the verge of something big. Harold, what's your final scorecard? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got it 115, 113, seven rounds to five, Saddam Ali. You know, Jim, I'll tell you, it, round eight, I just thought Saddam Ali turned the fight around. He took it to Miguel Cotto. He landed more shots. He landed the harder shots. He just, you know, he kept backing up Miguel Cotto. I think just Miguel Cotto either tired or just didn't have it in the last five rounds. I thought Saddam Ali did a terrific job closing this fight, you know, winning the last five rounds to win a decision, very, very close. Let us your, give us your classic objective evaluation of the three official judges, Harold. Okay, Jim, Eric Marlinski is from Buffalo, New York. Uh, you know, he's a very good judge. He was assigned to Deontay Wilder when he knocked out Bermain Stavern on November the 4th in the first round at the Barclays Center. So he's a good judge. Steve Weisfeld from Rivervale, New Jersey. He's judged 1,358 fights according to Box Rec. He judged Danny Jacobs, Lewis Arias on November 11th for us at the Nassau County, County Coalition and scored at 119-108. He had the right score. Julie Letterman from West Nyack, New York, judged 597 fights. According to Box Rec, she was the judge on HBO for Sergei Kovalev by uh, Slava Shabransky on November the 25th, and also for Danny Jacobs and Louis Arias on November the 11th at the Nassau County Coliseum, which she had 120 to 108, same as me. Final number before I throw it up to Michael Buffer. CompuBox found Ali with a 49-27 edge in power shots landed over the last four rounds. That might turn out to be the difference in the fight. Here's Michael to tell us. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards on this historic night of boxing at the Garden. Julie Letterman scores at 115, 113. Mark Marlinski scores at 116. 112. Steve Weisfeld, 115, 113 to the winner by unanimous decision. And new champion from Brooklyn, New York, Saddam World Hill.